Tonight, we take on the N-word. The NFL actually proposing penalizing teens when players use it. And to get another perspective, Dominic spoke with a prominent pastor today from Queens regarding the controversial use of the word. And Dominic, he's here to tell us what the good reverend had to say. Well, Richard, as you well know, it's a word with a long controversial history going all the way back to slavery. But these days, Hollywood, young people, even African Americans, and especially rappers, use the N-word to greet each other. One prominent pastor in Queens, the Reverend Floyd Flake, says use of that word should come to an immediate end. As Richard said, the NFL is looking at penalizing teams when players use the N-word on the field. Pastor Flake, here we are at beautiful Allen AME Church. I know that LL Cool J is one of your members out of thousands who attend service here each and every Sunday. But I want you to take a look at this, Pastor. It's a very popular movie about football titled Any Given Sunday, starring Al Pacino. He's changing the plays. He just does what he likes. You run the plays, I call. I've been warming the bench the whole time I've been in the pros. I don't plan on going back. So, Pastor, the movie looks innocent. It looks fine. And I enjoyed the movie, but the movie starts out with a chorus of, and we didn't show it just now, my in mm -hmm. that's the chorus of a song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now i want you to take a look at this video mm -hmm. jay-z featuring foxy brown mm -hmm. jay-z as you know has titles of songs with the n-word mm -hmm. i never slip get a grip what you don't see is what you get weapons conceal what the y'all feel when you play sick we can all get it what the deal the one i got no one can you Sleeps around, but he gives me a lie. So, Pastor Flake, has it gone too far? I think the use of the N-word has not only gone too far, but I think that it has become a part of our culture that needs to be totally dismissed. I am a Southerner. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Uh, the N-word was used um, everywhere. And uh, back then, you could not respond anyway against it. And now, when we have gotten all these civil rights, all the things we have wanted, we have that, and we are the people who use the word that we thought was so damaging when it was used by other people against us. I still think it is a word that is used against us, but the tragedy of it now is it is by us. And that's a disgrace that we come this far and we're still calling ourselves the most disparaging word that has ever been used in American history. How do you deal with it from the pulpit? From the pulpit, it does not, I do not let that become a defining thing within the context of what we do in this ministry. Our ministry is about powering, empowering, and uplifting. And because it is about empowering and uplifting, we have a school, we, have a, we teach our kids, our kids, you will not hear using that word. And uh, when you look at the whole of this ministry, as it has become, as, as the state records say, the largest, the largest congregation in New York, we cannot allow ourselves to drift back to where we were by virtue of those who uh, uh, called us names in the past. We now have to create names for ourselves, and we need to deal with the reality that what we call civil rights, we have to stop talking in the same language that we had in the past and begin to speak in a more positive language ourselves so that the next generation of our children do not allow themselves to be caught and have this word attached to them as well. We are a new generation. Other people are coming across our borders every day, Latinos, Asians, other people. We need to step up and be real about the fact that we are who we are. We are African American people by virtue of our birthright in the soil of Africa, and we are American citizens by virtue of our birthright here in this land, which we are as much a part of as any other person. But Pastor Flake, has the train already left the station? You have African American kids, white kids, Latino kids, Asian kids, they use the N-word now to say hello to each other. 
And that's a fact, and that's a shame. Uh, and the shame of it is that we have allowed that word and the language that is a part of it to become a part of a generation that should not have to have any direct content in, in any direct relationship with a word that is so damaging. Pastor Flake, some say by using the N-word, like Jay-Z, for example, I've watched them in some interviews, that by using the word, you take the power away from it, the negative away from it. I don't know that that's um, a correct analysis. I, I, I just cannot believe that the word has any degree of meaning that is positive. And anything that is not positive is negative. And if it's negative, it's something that really should be done away with. Pastor, the NFL is considering penalizing teams when players use the N-word on the field. Is that a good idea? Uh, if they think that that is a problem, uh, it's hard to deal with when you talk about a grouping, a situation like a football team. You're dealing with so many people, and I don't know how you actually manage that. But I do believe that because that team has whites and blacks and Latinos and all kinds of people, that no group should feel that they are disparaged by any other part of the entity of which they all are a part. On Monday, we'll talk politics with Reverend Flake about Mayor de Blasio and the subject, Richard, of charter schools. Never, never dull debate. Thank you, Dominic.